So one of the key aspects of, of understanding of how humans and climate and the Earth system interact um, that has become uh, you know, more and more important over the last 20 or 30 years has been human management or mismanagement, however you want to look at it, of the land surface. So how do we uh, interact with um, vegetation? How do we manage the, the natural landscape uh, and, the, and the, the, the sort of um, agricultural landscape for our benefit? Because that's what we do as humans. That tends to be what we do. We, we colonize new places and we utilize the resources that are available to us. We've always done that. That's what we're very good at. Um, what we're not so good at is knowing when to stop and what the limits of, of that are and how to manage the impact of those things. That's partly because the, the dynamics of those things are very complicated. So one aspect where that has, has become very apparent over the last um, 30 or 40 years, or really since the advent of, of satellite observation, is how important forest def deforestation and degradation have become. So. We all know, you know the, the figures about how terrible deforestation is and how it's going, it's going on across uh, different parts of the world. It's happening everywhere. Um, so as, a, as an example, uh, you know, close to home here in the UK, um, we are one of the least uh, forested areas in Western Europe. So about 12%, uh, 12, 12 to 14% of the UK is forest. But of that, the vast majority of it is planted coniferous woodland, so essentially commercial plantation forest that was planted um, mostly since the beginning of the 20th century after the First World War. Uh, and in fact, this is a little sort of bit, of bit of historical context here that just shows some of the, the challenges that they're facing. So the UK isn't considered to be a, a forested landscape at all, and it, it isn't. It was. Uh, so if we go back five, six hundred years to pre-industrial revolution, so not that far, the, 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 the majority of the landscape, particularly the lowlands in the UK, would have been covered with dense deciduous woodland. Lots of large animals, so there would have been wild boar, wolves, bears and so on. Um, that changed dramatically as uh, populations increased and became more mobile and deforested the landscape for timber primarily, but for firewood, timber and fuel. Uh, and then also to manage the landscape for, to clear for agriculture, so arable and uh, cattle grazing. So all of these pressures on removing forest. Um, it reached its lowest point. So the, the UK forest was down to a few percent cover by the, the end of the 19th century. And so when the First World War came along, the demands for timber were required for building trenches. Uh, on the front lines of the, uh, of the First World War, essentially the UK ran out of, of timber for doing that. Uh, and so the government decided, look, this, we can't allow this to happen. If there's another war like this, we need to have timber to provide this. And so they established the Forestry Commission, whose job it was, was to make sure that the UK had enough timber. And that was by planting conifer forest. So I use this example of um, you know, the, the sort of almost accidental deforestation that happened and, and degradation of, of the, the woodlands of the UK that happened gradually, then increasingly rapidly as the population increased um, and urban areas got bigger um, to, the, to the point where when it suits us and we realise there's not enough woodland, then we decide, oh, it's gone too far. Now we ought to do something about it. And the woodland in the UK has um, increased in cover quite a lot over the last, uh, you know, to the end of the 20th century. We're at the highest point for 500 years. But of that, very little of it is the same kind of woodland that would be recognisable 500 years ago. So in microcosm, that is, that is a problem that's going on worldwide in terms of the encroachment into forests. So. Why is that important? Uh, it's important for a you know, number of reasons that um, globally, these forests store huge amounts of carbon. That carbon, if it's stored in the forest, it's not in the atmosphere. Deforestation and degradation, and I, I'm, I, I will separate those things. So deforestation is where you just cut the whole forest down and you take it out and you do whatever you're gonna do with it. You, most of the time you either use the higher quality timber and then a lot of the lower quality timber either just gets left there um, or it gets used, some of it gets used for fuel, wood and so on. So 
deforestation and then degradation is the gradual encroachment on to forested environments. So that might be due to low level agriculture, it might be to low level clearing for woodland and for settlement, uh, it might be due to uh, building roads. If you build roads through forested areas and you, and you uh, increasingly fragment those forests, their value um, and their richness in terms of species changes dramatically because of connectivity. So, you know, you start building a network of roads, you don't actually re necessarily remove a, a vast amount of forest cover, but if you chop it up into smaller chunks that are cut by roads, then those chunks of forest become more and more isolated from each other in terms of seed dispersal, in terms of small mammals, birds, larger, ma larger animals. And that has all sorts of implications for the resilience of those forests, how they, their response to fire, their response to drought, their response to all kinds of other stresses that are coming their way, partly as a result of us, partly as a result of changing climate, which is also as a result of us, but for, for all sorts of reasons. So degradation is the sort of gradual uh, lower intensity loss of forest, which the, 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 the distinction between those two things is that one of the, the first question we want to answer is how much? How much are we losing? And answering that question for deforestation, we do pretty well because it's the sort of thing, again, that we can use satellite data to monitor and we have done over the last uh, 20, 30 years. And there's been some really noticeable successes. So, for example, deforestation in the Amazon was approaching a, a peak in the 90s. Some of it was legal, was government uh, exploitation of forest resources that were sold off to logging companies. Most of it was illegal logging. And it was very hard to track. It was very, and if you can't track it, it's very hard to prosecute people. It's very hard to legislate. The whole process requires you to have reliable information about where it's happening and as soon as possible after it happens. Uh, and so the Brazilian government actually took a, a very strong lead on this and developed their own satellite monitoring program, which allowed them to say where illegal logging was happening, when it was happening. And that sort of deforestation program enabled them, there has to be the political will to do something about it, but that also requires people to see, yes, it's happening here, it's happening on my backyard, somebody's taking forest that belongs to me, that belongs to us. And so when that happened, it was a lot easier for the Brazilian government to make those kind of political things stick. Uh, and that's what they did. And so they had a notable success in, in the, the 2000s, the late 2000s, in, in reducing deforestation. It's the one time anywhere, in, particularly in tropical regions, where politicians have m managed to reduce deforestation. Um, so I, I, I would sort of say that the m more recent picture is perhaps not so optimistic. There's been an upswing again, but we, we kind of... We can use satellite data to monitor deforestation and measure it pretty well. So if people decide to do something about it, we have the tools to do that. Degradation is a lot harder to spot because often you don't see these, these very obvious patterns that you get with, with deforestation where whole chunks of forest are disappearing. That is much less obvious when there's low level encroachment to forest, when there's clearance for agriculture, even when there's selective logging. So if you're an illegal logging operation, the, the, the sort of most stupid thing you could do is go in and just chop down a chunk of forest because it's obvious. So the thing you do is you go in and you pick the trees that will be most commercially valuable to you, you chop those down and then you drag them hundreds of metres out of the forest to the nearest roads. In the process, you leave a gap in the canopy and then you leave these, um, these trails through the forest which are hugely destructive but actually very difficult to see from satellite data. So Degradation is now is a harder thing to map. It's, it, it's across a much wider spectrum of forests. It's not just tropical forests as well. It's temperate forests and it's in uh, boreal forests as well. Um, and so degradation is, is known to be a big cause of loss of forest in general, of uh, reducing the quality of those forests for their resilience to climate, their, their value as an ecosystem service to us selfishly, but to all other organisms that depend on them. So there's been a lot of work again in trying to understand how, um, how we can map degradation uh, rather than just purely deforestation. And there are um, UN-led uh, activities in order to try and quantify those things. So the, the UN Red Plus, which is reducing emissions from deforestation and degradation,
which recognises the fact that it's not just deforestation, it's degradation as well. And addressing those challenges will require, again, uh, um, it will require political will to do something about it. But what politicians require is hard information that says, yes, this is happening, and we all agree that the methods that we're using to monitor these things are something that we can all sign up to. And that's not necessarily an easy thing to do. But again, satellite data are helping us to, to build those pictures that will then enable you know, global institutions to turn to politicians and say, if you want to do something about that, we have the tools to do that.